I want to wish all my Indian fans happy Diwali. So living in Malaysia, I enjoy a huge variety of Indian cuisines. I love the intense flavors, spiciness and richness of the dishes. Well, unfortunately, Indian foods tend to get a bad rap of being unhealthy. This impression about Indian food exists is because most restaurants and takeaways tend to serve us with huge portions of greasy, unhealthy and calorie-dense meals. So guys, we all know that whether a food is healthy or unhealthy really comes down to the preparation, cooking methods and also the portion size. So the next time you were to cook or eat Indian foods, here are a few tips to make it healthier. Pack on the spices. The best way to flavor your food without adding extra calories is to use lots of herbs and spices. So experiment and use a huge variety of spices. Go easy on the oil and coconut milk. Indian curries are well known for their creaminess and oiliness. Try to use a non-stick pan and reduce the amount of oil used. Yes. Coconut milk is very healthy and flavorful. However, it is still very high in saturated fat. Just half a cup of coconut milk has about 278 calories and 28 grams of fat. So you want to really reduce the amount used. Avoid cream-based stews or curries. So swap it for yogurt instead and go for tomato-based curries. Choose grill over deep frying. So avoid deep fried foods such as pakora, samosas, onion bhaji, vada or even fried chicken. Choose anything tandoori, which is essentially grilled food. Choose plain rice over flavoured rice. Most flavoured rice such as biryani rice tends to be loaded with ghee or oil. So for instance, one cup of cooked biryani rice has about 350 calories and 10 grams of fat. Whereas one cup of cooked basmati plain rice only has less than 200 calories. Don't overdo it on rice. I'm sure we all know someone who would pile on a huge amount of rice on their plate. Remember guys, rice should only make up a quarter of your meal. And finally, be wise about bread. A naan goes perfectly with curry. But be aware that one piece of plain naan has about 247 calories. Butter or cheese naan can sometimes rack up to 400 calories. So choose lighter option and go for chapati instead, which only has 100 calories per piece. So follow these tips and you can enjoy Indian foods as part of a healthy and balanced diet. So I want to share with you some of my favorite Indian dishes which you can have for breakfast, lunch and dinner. Guys, I have to be honest and say that it can be quite intimidating to cook Indian food because of the huge varieties of spices used and also it can take quite long to prepare a dish. So what I'm going to share with you is my take on some of my favorite Indian dishes. I've recreated them to make them healthier and you can prep these dishes in under 30 minutes. So it's quick, easy and convenient. For breakfast, I love steamed idli. Instead of the traditional method, we want to add oats and vegetables into the mixture to make it a really filling breakfast. What you'll need are 3 quarter cup of oats grinded into powder, 3 quarter cup of rava, 3 quarter cup of yogurt, half a cup of water, one small carrot grated, half a teaspoon of baking soda, half a teaspoon of mustard seeds, two green chilies finely chopped. 1 teaspoon of curry leaves, finely chopped, about 6 to 7 crushed cashew nuts, half a tablespoon of canola oil, and half a teaspoon of salt. So, in a large bowl, add oats, rava, and salt. Mix well. Then add in the yogurt and mix until well combined. Set aside. Heat half a tablespoon of oil over medium high heat. Add in the mustard seeds, cashew nuts, green chilies, and curry leaves. Saute very quickly until they begin to pop. Then stir in the grated carrots and continue to saute for another 1 to 2 minutes. Remove from heat. Add the cooked mixture and half a cup of water into the oats rava batter. Combine well. Grease idli paste with a little bit of oil. If you don't have it, just use 8 small stainless steel cups, just like what I'm doing here. And right before steaming, mix in the baking soda. Scoop the batter equally into the cups. Steam for about 12 to 15 minutes. And serve warm. I like to have two idlis for breakfast with a side of light chutney or dal. 
So rava is made from durum wheat, which has a higher protein content and is digested slowly. Oats, on the other hand, is known for its high fiber content. So the combination of rava, oats and carrots will keep you fuller for longer and prevent overeating. These idlis are high in carbs and protein but low in fat. So they also make a great pre-workout snack to boost your energy and performance level. As for lunch, I'm going to show you how to make my mango spinach dal. So what I've used are half a cup of yellow lentils soaked and drained, one ripe mango peeled and diced, one cup of spinach washed and chopped, three cups of water, half a medium onion diced, two garlic cloves minced, half a tablespoon of ginger minced, quarter teaspoon of ground coriander, quarter teaspoon of ground turmeric, quarter teaspoon of cumin seeds, quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper, half a teaspoon of salt divided, and half a tablespoon of canola oil. In a pot, add two cups of water, lentils, turmeric, and quarter teaspoon of salt. Bring to a boil. Then reduce to a simmer and allow it to cook for about 15 minutes. Remember to stir occasionally. So while waiting for the lentils to cook, in a pan, heat half a tablespoon of oil over medium-high heat. Add cumin seeds and cook very quickly for about 30 seconds until fragrant and slightly brown. Then stir in the onion and cook for another 1 to 2 minutes until onions are golden brown and fragrant. Stir in the rest of the ingredients. Garlic, ginger, coriander, cayenne pepper, and the remaining quarter teaspoon of salt. Continue to saute very quickly for another one minute. Remove from heat. Stir in the cooked mixture, mango and spinach into the lentils. Allow all the ingredients to simmer for another 15 minutes until the lentils are falling apart. Remember to keep stirring occasionally. Serve warm. This dish is bursting with flavors. I love the nutty and earthy flavor of the lentils combined with the sweetness of mango and the spices really brings this dish together. For a balanced meal, serve it with one or two chapatis or one cup of cooked basmati rice. Lentils is also a great source of protein for vegetarians. So if you have never tried lentils before, it is time to add this superfood into your diet. And of course, for dinner, we have to cook curry. I mean, what is Indian food without curry? What you'll need are half a can of chickpeas rinsed and drained, one and a half cups of cauliflower florets, half an eggplant cut into one inch chunks, half a can of diced tomatoes, about three quarter cup of water, half a large onion sliced, one garlic clove minced, one teaspoon of fresh ginger minced, one tablespoon of curry powder, half a teaspoon of garam masala, half a teaspoon of mustard seeds, quarter teaspoon of salt, and one tablespoon of canola oil divided. In a pot, heat half a tablespoon of oil over medium-high heat. Add curry powder, garam masala, mustard seeds, toss very quickly until the spices begin to darken. Then add onion, garlic, ginger, and salt. Saute for about one to two minutes until they are soft and slightly brown. Then stir in the eggplant, chickpeas, cauliflower, tomatoes, and water. Cover and cook for about 15 minutes until vegetables are tender. Remember to stir occasionally. Remove from heat and serve warm. One serving only has 225 calories, so serve it with half a cup or one cup of rice, and even a piece of chicken or fish. This makes a really wholesome and delicious meal. So all these recipes can be prepped ahead, and they will keep well in the fridge for up to three days or in the freezer for up to two weeks. The bottom line is, no matter what cuisine it is, there will always be the healthier and also unhealthy options. Make smarter choices. Choose healthier cooking methods, such as grilling, boiling, steaming, baking, or lightly stir-frying. If you're used to eating huge portions, start being aware of your portion size and remember to stay active on a daily basis, okay? So these are a few of my favorite Indian dishes. What are your favorites? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to give this video a thumb up, share it, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for new weekly videos and also for more healthy recipes. All the best.